The horse is like, can you scream in somebody else's house? Hey guys, it's your girl Ayesha, aka Geek XX Chic, and we are back with another reaction to Vinland Saga. We're now on episode 10 of season one, which is called Ragnarok. So if you are very familiar with Norse mythology, you know that Ragnarok is what they believe is the end of the world, the kind of pivotal event that changes everything. So I'm thinking this episode's gonna be super happy, light and fluffy. <laughs> but anyhow, the last episode we had Thorfinn go up against Thorkel the Tall, who is just a magnanimous man. And it didn't go well for him, but he did leave with his life. And now Thorkel knows that it's the son of his old fighting buddy. So I do think when they meet again, there could be an interesting conversation if Thorfinn lets him talk. And after the siege on London did not work out the way they wanted, the Danes have now moved on to going to Essex or Wessex, one or the other. And Thorfinn has joined them, but he is very broken at the moment. So... Let's see how things go in the next town over and whether or not my guy is going to be healed up enough to do anything other than cry. So let's jump right in. Just before I do, though, a reminder that if you'd like to know when these episodes drop, you can go ahead and hit that subscribe button as well as the notification bell so you'll be in the know. All right, that out of the way. Let's get into the episode right now. Huh. This man doing shot put for fun. Who means like come play with me? Mind your head, pointy. Y'all want to die that fast? That much? Okay. Now act like you, you, you weren't scared. This man reading the Bible right now? I mean, I'm not against prayer, but maybe you want to like take the camp further away from the fireballs or the cannonballs, I mean. Oh, wow. He's saying wait it out. Oh, you're a Catholic too. Interesting. Hmm. Why does that matter? <laughs> He's like, um, can you never smile again? It actually terrifies me and brings me nightmares. It's supposed to be something of joy, but it's the opposite. Oh, we're back to tall grass. Is this Thorfinn? Hmm. Missing Iceland right about now, huh? We haven't gone back to Iceland in a minute, I have no idea what's going on with his mom and sister, but I guess it doesn't really matter at the moment. Oh, is he dreaming of Vinland? Or what he thinks Vinland is? Oh, there's his mommy. Hmm. Is Thor sure that these are his kids? I mean, not one of them has brown hair, even though it's the dominant gene. Wow, this is absolute bliss. I get the dream, bro. I get it. Unless you have another one you need to know about. That has brown hair. Yeah, you have a whole family that you've decided to ignore and let worry about you for revenge. But you haven't gotten yet. Your conscience is talking to you there, buddy. You gonna listen for once? I like the way they showed that the darkness came over when he talked about the revenge. These are the people you roll with, Thorfinn. They will go to your village and they would do just this. Oh, the arrows. His dad's gonna be full of arrows. Horse is like, can you scream in somebody else's house? Try to sleep. Carry your heavy asses all day. Yeah, tell him, rude. Come in your house and be screaming up the place. That's what 
What's his name described to you? Why did I forget his name already? Leaf. Mm. Disgusting. Again, humans can be absolutely unbelievably cruel to each other. It's just stomach turning to be celebrating over people's lives you've taken. Embarrassing. I don't think England was united under one king during this time, though, if memory serves. Right at this point, if this is what y'all want to die over after everything, so be it. Iceland to a great I'm so glad you somewhat think of home from time to time. Yeah, I guess home's gonna remind him of his dad, and the other reason he's running from it. And he's right back. Do you see the way revenge and trauma keep you locked in? He hasn't even moved in 10 years, mentally. So I'm right, he's about 16. I mean, aren't you? He's essentially your dad. You've hung around for 10 years. Mm, shouldn't you be, though? As you well know. This island is now It's true. They conquered. Mm -hmm. Brains over strength. Mm -hmm. Look at that. Askeladd reads. He's a teenager. You should. Oh, that's soon. Mm. Oh. Okay. All right, well. Glad we settled that over an insult. It isn't. It happens with or without you. Good question. Earn pocket money. It's the way he just so frivolously talks about destroying people's entire existence. Damn! Dane again. Dane, it's so terrible. Sir, too much. My god. Keep going, Ragnar. <laughs> oh, he's still just praying. <laughs> I really do appreciate his civil attitude, you know? I think he's prepared to die there. He said hi. I don't like your tent. Indeed, what happened? That's what I thought. I don't think they would kick him out. What's in it for them? That's going to be the first question. Where's the money? They're not doing this because they're patriotic. Okay, you know, the Danes are all a little bit crazy. Jesus. What did he do? Alright. So he gets a ring of message. I kind of knew he was going to kill him the second he told him to stop. But why? What the horse do? He wants the glory for himself for taking out Thorkel. And that's why he's doing it. Greedy SOB. I mean... He'll figure something out. 
that's a Viking for you. But that man has shown us that he will save his tush no matter what. So he's definitely got a backup plan or an escape route. Okay. We will have to see how it goes. But yeah, Ragnarok may be it. I don't think so. As I said before, Askeladd's a very slippery one. He's definitely not going to go out that way if he looks like it's going to... He never takes on a fight. He thinks he can't win. But yeah, it's a big gamble. Can't say the man does not have the... Uh, the audacity to go for the big payoff. And like he said, if he can rescue a prince of Denmark, it's going to be bonus from England because he took out their biggest potential threat, right? Because even though right now Thorkel is working for the Brits, I'm sure they're, they were thinking of how do we take this guy out? Because the whole point is that if it's following historical accuracy, the Brits at this point did not want any Danes in. The, they just didn't want Danes in England at all. They didn't care if you were a nice Dane, if you helped us out, whatever. They wanted all the Danes gone. So anyway, they're going to get some brownie points for that. And then obviously all the other Danes that were there. And if they can bring a prince back to the king, they're just looking at the payout from that. Like royal money is a lot more than they're going to be getting from these villages. So anyway, that's, I guess, the next stop is back to Thorkel. I mean, they wouldn't have introduced his character again unless we were going to have a battle with him. I somehow think it's going to be Thorfinn that takes him out. And I think it's going to be because, as I said, I think Thorkel's going to want to talk to him about Thor's. But Oh, Thorfinn is so unbelievably stubborn and so unbelievably stuck as a character that it's a bit frustrating at the moment, but I understand it. Like, I gotta remember, he's 16, he's known nothing else, he's been literally stuck in the day that his dad died emotionally and mentally, he's not moved on from it. He might be in a 16-year-old's body, but he's really not mentally, he's never left that day on the boat where his dad died. And so he feels trapped by this revenge plot because he, this is not what he really wants. Like I'm liking that we're seeing a little bit more of other thoughts that he's having, like these dreams of Vinland, basically, of a place that's beautiful and fertile, his family all being there, everyone being safe. And again, he never sees himself with his dad as, as a 16 year old, right? If you notice all the flashbacks when he's looking to his dad, when he's talking to his dad, he's always a child. So that is because mentally he has not moved back. He's not moved past that. He's still very much that six year old kid who, had the world in front of him and thought the world of his dad and saw it all come crashing down and when those arrows hit his dad's chest. So it's very good storytelling. I like the way they, they keep giving us that imagery to remind us that Thor Finn is stuck. And even though he wants to have, a you know, the, the, the beautiful home, the country life, a safe place for his sister and his mom, he can't, as soon as he starts to even begin to let go of the anger and the hate, he's reminded of that day, right? Even in that flashback when they're walking through this beautiful field, it's a wonderful memory. And inevitably it turns into war, you know, burning the, the war, the death, everything. And then inevitably his dad getting shot all over again. So this is the sad cycle that Thorfinn is trapped in, him waking up screaming. I know that's not the first night he's had that. There has to come a time, which I'm hoping will be soon for him, where he can figure out a way to let go of what happened. And I know he feels like re revenge is the only way, but that's the sad thing is even if he does get to the point where he gets Askeladd's head. He's going to realize very quickly that the trauma is still there and that the anger is still going to be there as well. And that I don't know what he's going to do when that happens, because I know he really thinks that at this point, Askeladd's death is going to wipe out all the negativity that he's dealing with right now. And that's just not true. Like he hasn't even really allowed himself to properly grieve his dad. Not to mention, I do think he does think about his mom and sister a lot, but I feel like he feels like he can't go back and face them for two reasons. One, I think, as I said before, he's scared that if he goes back to Iceland, he's going to have too many memories of his dad and that's going to be a lot for him to handle. And also we know that he's carrying guilt from what happened, thinking that it's his fault that it happened. So I think he's afraid that if he goes home and faces his, his family, they're going to say, this is all your fault. Of course they wouldn't, but six-year-old mind trapped in a 16-year-old's body, right? So very interesting to watch how his character is dealing with all of this. Like you can tell he's tiring of the battle, like he's tiring of doing all this death. And it looks like for the most part, he doesn't participate in the more debased parts of this, but you know, it's still, he's still a part of it, right? He's still contributing to the more debased things that these men are doing. And I'm thinking like right now, because he's a kid, they're kind of 
leaving him alone for some of this stuff. But my worry is that if he continues until he gets to a point where they really start to see him as a man, he's gonna start getting a lot of pressure to do some of the other things. And because one thing that I've found that when you see groups like that who are doing those debased things, if they see somebody who's not doing them, they start to feel some type of way and they want you to do what they're doing so they feel better about it, right? Because they know what they're doing is wrong. So anyway, I'm just saying, I really want my boy to get out of there before it gets to that point for him. But so far at the moment, he's, he's just been healing up and they've just been going and raiding all these villages. Apparently the main army was supposed to be going to Essex, but they turned back. My guess is because winter is coming again and we know that the King of Denmark does not like to make his men march during the winter. So they're all headed back up north again. And Askeladd's people were still raiding and trying to make money before they have to head up too. And then we see with this messenger that basically, oh, man, Thorco got bored and he decided to bring the battle to only for the 4,000 man contingency there. Not to mention the fact that he heard there was a prince. So he's like, okay, if the main army's not gonna give me the battle that I'm waiting for, I'm gonna force them to by taking the king or the prince hostage and making them come at me for him. So yeah, the point is he don't wanna live, okay? <laughs> Thorkel is done with life. He wants to die, clearly, but he wants to die gloriously. So he's picking these fights. He left the fortress of the bridge because that's really what was keeping him. I, I mean, don't get me wrong. He's definitely able to take out a lot of average guys, but being on the bridge definitely helped give them a secure position for a long time. So now that he's left the fortress of the bridge, he is exposed. He doesn't have that vantage point he had before where he could see people coming from any direction. So it's gonna be a little easier to get a shot at him. And I, like I said, I was sneaking some suspicion Thorfinn's going to be the one who's going to finish him off. But I do hope that he gets a chance to talk to him because Thorfinn needs someone. He needs somebody who knew his dad to like give him something so they can realize like the dream said that he needs to stop focusing solely on revenge because it is. It's killing this kid's soul. You can tell. And it's toughened him up. Yes, but not in the way that not in a good way, not in a way that's going to really be healthy for him in the long term. So yeah, again, another great, another great episode. We're going to have to see what happens when they head up and try to go up against Thorkel again. And yeah, we're just gonna have to see where this story takes us. It's very interesting. I'm enjoying it a lot. So I hope you guys enjoy watching along with me. If you did, please show some love and I'll see you in the next one.